I'm Bea Wilson. I'm the author of Consider the Fork, A History of How We Cook and Eat. The book is about the technology of cooking. It's also about the culture of eating and the social history of the kitchen. It's about how all the different tools we've assembled to help us cook have turned this everyday task from drudgery to pleasure. I'm interested in everything from the moment we discovered fire to the pottery we then invented as a way of heating up our food or boiling it or frying it to the relatively recent invention of ice as a preservation tool, to the kind of amazing high-tech devices we have in today's kitchens, everything from microwaves to sous vide machines. And I'm not just interested in these gadgets for their own sake as inventions, but the profound effects that they've had both on the food in our plates, but also sometimes more surprisingly, the changes that they've wrought on the human body itself and on our lives. I think sometimes we focus too much on the what of cooking, and we miss the how and the why. The pestle mortar is a fascinating example of how tools can retain the same form, but have a completely different function. Looking back 10,000 years ago, pestle mortars looked very, very similar to how they look today, but they were back-breaking tools of drudgery and pain, whereas today they're just something we use for fun on the weekend. Entire cultures are founded on cooking food one way and not another. So for example, if you look at Chinese cuisine and French cuisine, you could talk about the different flavors or the different ingredients, but they're also cuisines of knives. In China, a single knife, the two, which is this fearsome cleaver-like slab of metal, is used for everything from mincing garlic very, very finely to hacking firewood or jointing a chicken. Whereas in French classical haute cuisine, the entire dignity of the cuisine is founded on finding the correct knife for the correct job. And these different tools, they speak of different cultures, they speak of different resources, and they're fundamentally different approaches both to cooking and you could even say to living. But no matter how much the tools of the kitchen may change, it remains this place that we all want to congregate. And I know that for me and my family, the kitchen, this place of pots and pans and wooden spoons, will always be the heart and soul of the home.